No one has more state pride than New Mexicans. The vibrant culture, bold flavors, unique history, and dramatic landscapes under our Zia sun are like no other. And the people of New Mexico are a rare breed. As diverse as we are, together we breathe life and soul into this high desert land, a land that promises adventure. I'm Michael Newman, and as your host, I'll be taking you with me as I seek out the best the land of enchantment has to offer. New Mexico, Mexico feels like home. Thanks for watching another episode of New Mexico True Television. I'm your host, Michael Newman. In this episode, we're taking advantage of all the agricultural offerings around our state. From pick your own fields of berries, to lessons on wool dyeing and spinning, to immersing ourselves in aerotherapeutic lavender. In this episode, we reap the rewards of our state's agricultural bounty. Salmon Raspberry Ranch is located just half an hour north of Las Vegas, New Mexico, in the town of La Cueva. Just off I-25, you can pick up Highway 518 North, which will take you straight into this town just shy of Mora. The property of the ranch dates back to the territorial days of our state and was part of the historic Mora land grant. The rich history of La Cueva and the ranch property is evident in the neighboring grist mill and the mercantile store where the salmon ranch store is housed today. Thankfully, this town and the salmon ranch property have retained the same look and feel from the days of old. Its quaintness and charm are an immediate draw, and the gardens set along the adobe and flagstone ruins of the old tack and farrier shops beckon you to wander among the wildflowers. Not to mention the many goodies calling my name in the ranch store. Berries, chocolates, dry goods, and jars of New Mexican salsas abound. It's like an old-fashioned country store with all the modern-day treats from our local communities under one roof. But let's not forget the main reason why I made my way up to Salmon Raspberry Ranch, the raspberries. I've come to their pick-your-own field to load up on the bounty of berries that are just begging to be picked. Every year, people flock to these fields so they can take home some of the abundance of raspberries growing on these stalks, plump with tart sweetness. Count me in. The field is so huge. 42 rows are 575 feet long. Really? And how long have they been here? Well, we got some that are 30-year-old stocks, and some are 28-year-old stocks. Some of them are from 10 all the way to one year old. Wow. Okay, that's yeah. great. Okay, yeah. cool. So let me jump on this row right here. Yes. Oh, this is a good one. So many of them. Mmm. Nice and tart. Sweet. This is better than the stuff you get at the store. It amazes me that countless numbers of people have already been out here picking berries the last few weeks, and there's still such a plethora of them waiting for me to greedily pluck them with my eager fingers. One for now, one for later. Two for now, <laughs> two for later. Yep, I think I'm getting the hang of it, but compared with some of the other folks in these fields, I'm a novice. Many families have made raspberry picking at Salmon Ranch an annual family tradition. I think I may have to do the same. Some more. Look, there's one right there, Daddy. Give me another one. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like I've got as many berries as will fit in this bucket. Time to weigh in. I'm already listing off all the things I can make with these berries. Raspberry jam, raspberry topping, raspberry fudge. But wait, all of those items are available in the ranch store. I can save myself the efforts in the kitchen and just polish these berries off right now. With a belly full of berries, I headed for a spot in the shade behind the ranch cafe where I had the chance to speak with Frances Salmon about her family's history with this ranch. The place came to be because my father had been overseas. He was director of the Port of La Hague after D-Day. And uh, his parents perished at Auschwitz and his sister. And he wanted someplace safe for our family to grow up. So he wrote my mother and said, go find us some land. So she set out with his old business partner and the three of us, and they drove through Arizona and Texas and Colorado and New Mexico, and they found this magical place, 1,200 acres, which was the beginning of our ranch. And that was in 1945. Wow, so there's a long history here. Yeah, um, almost 70 years. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And what, what do you think was the draw to this, this land specifically? What made this so special? You feel it when you're here, mm -hmm. and it's sort of an inchoate sensation. Mm -hmm. You know, it, there's, there is nothing specifically 
but there is a sense of peace and security here. Mm -hmm. And when you're here and the people who come here feel it, um, it seduces you. Right. It provides for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you have the fertile land, you have the yeah. mountains, you have the have sky. It, yeah. We're at the base of the Sangre de Cristo mountain range. Mm -hmm. We're about 7,800 square feet or feet up. Mm -hmm. And it just is beautiful. I yeah. mean, you have the New Mexico skies, you have the New Mexico light. And it typically is greener here because mm -hmm. we, we get more rainfall. While the ranch's beginnings were rooted in raising cattle, fluctuations in the market led the salmon family to opt for growing raspberries instead. And how happy are we that they made this decision? It's amazing the children when they come to pick, many of them have never seen anything grow. Mm -hmm. So when they come to pick raspberries, they're kind of amazed. And we have a little sign up saying, you're welcome to taste the berries, but please don't make a meal of them. <laughs> but the kids come out covered in red juice. <laughs> so clearly they've made a meal of them plus. You know? Right, you know, and you get these kids who've never seen But they've never before. seen anything growing. I mean, they just love it and they bring their dogs and their parents and make a day of it. Right, you know? totally. So, yeah. And it's kind of going that back to the land kind of, you know, culture that's kind of coming back to people now that have been yeah. so disconnected in right. city life. Right. To come to an actual farm and be and breathe and in the fresh air. And see things growing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's a little tucked away paradise you have yeah. over here. Yeah, <laughs> we think so. Well, thank you so much for, for letting us come by and oh, let delighted. me pick some raspberries because yeah. I, I, got I got my good share you of raspberries. You got your good share. <laughs> but don't wash them because it makes them mushy when oh, you wash oh, okay, them. Okay, okay. Okay, they're grown organically. Mm -hmm, okay. So just eat them the way you pick them. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Words of wisdom. You've dealt with a lot of raspberries, so you know I what have. you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for coming. Absolutely. While the picking season runs from August through October, the shop and gardens are open year-round. Make sure and bring cash to buy your buckets of raspberries from the field. Insider tip from Francis if you want to freeze your raspberries. Put them on a cookie sheet and freeze them separately, and then put them in quart-sized baggies. They will come out perfectly. Not only is this a great spot for the kids, but the ranch allows dogs too, so bring your furry friends for a day in the fields. Stay tuned to meet some of New Mexico's dyed-in-the-wool weavers as they give us lessons in their craft. Find steals and deals for your next New Mexico vacation at NewMexico.org. And now from the pages of New Mexico Magazine. Tierra Wools is located in the town of Los Ojos, two and a half hours north of Albuquerque on Highway 84 in the northernmost reaches of our state. This weaving studio and showroom date back more than a hundred years and their rugs and wool products represent a rich culture and history of weaving in this region. Settled by Spaniards going back as early as the 16th century, Raising sheep and weaving have always been a way of life in this valley. Interior Wools makes for the perfect introduction to this heritage, evidenced by the exquisite rugs, pillows, and blankets, as well as clothing and accessories adorning the showroom. It is clear the local artisans of Los Ojos are doing an exceptional job at preserving the village's weaving legacy. In fact, the weavers of Tierra Wools today are utilizing the same wool their ancestors did, that of both Rambouillet and Navajo Churro sheep, a descendant of the ancient Iberian Churro sheep and the wool is as local as you can get, being sheared from the sheep that pasture in the surrounding mountain meadows, and the quality is superb. Moving beyond the showroom and the stunning display of finished products, you will take note of the array of yarns and tools you may buy for your own weaving projects. And for many people, this is why they come here. Through a regular schedule of weaving, spinning, and hand dyeing classes, Tierra Wools brings a new audience and participants to this age-old craft, engaging new people in the process every day. Let's start with the dyeing. Artisans at Tierra Wools dye both commercially and naturally, and for their natural dye, much of what they use is gathered locally, both fresh and dry plants, roots, nuts, just about anything you can imagine. I'm meeting up with Tony to learn about their process. So does what you actually actually spin and what you make, the end product, depend on like kind of the regional kind of plants, that the colors you have to dye with? Somewhat, but we do buy some things because Almost every local plant's going to give you a yellow. Right. Some kind of yellow. New Mexico. You know. That's it. <laughs> but mm -hmm. then you have a few things you can do. We use cota, which is Navajo tea or Mormon tea. Mm -hmm. Yerba negrita, chamisa, cañagre, curly dock. This is avocado skins and seeds. Really? <laughs> avocado. So I get everybody to save all their avocado seeds, and then when I have enough, we mm -hmm. chop them up. And that's, Nothing goes to waste. That's the first one I tried. That's cool. So you're actually doing a natural dye right now? Yes, these are some mealy bugs off a of prickly pear. Oh. And this will need to simmer an hour. 
it looks, oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> but if you pinch it, you see it that it's right not back. ready. Mm -hmm. So it takes an hour for it to soak up the color. So you, kinda have to, you have to be patient with it. You can't just rush the process. You got it. I'll show you over here. Here are the cochineal. These oh, are the mealy bugs from really? the prickly pear. They're almost metallic. Yeah. That's so great. It's an actual bug. They're little mealy bugs. <laughs> they're, they're dead already, but. No way. But they feed on the prickly pear. Correct. Okay. And I had always been told that the prickly pear, the fruit itself, would not stay fast to light if you uh, use it for dye. Mm -hmm. But I talked with one of my Navajo friends, and he said that if you ferment it, it will. Oh, and I haven't tried that yet. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised there's anything Tony hasn't tried. I had no idea how much can be reaped from our landscape to create all these wonderful dyes. I have a whole new appreciation for the spectrum of colors seen in these rugs. Speaking of rugs, one of Tearwool's weaver, Sophia, has offered to give me some one-on-one -on -one instruction on the loom. So Sophia, you're going to teach me how to weave on a loom? Yes. <laughs> or we're going to attempt to at least. Okay, so, so can you, let's do the, the basics, okay. essentials. Okay, this is the basics. Okay, this, this is your warp, this is your weft, okay? Um, your weft goes across your warp, the warp okay. is your, your base. And when you step, when you step on a treadle, this are, these are your treadles down mm -hmm. here, when you step on one, it opens a shed. It opens okay. a shed. So the shed has to be open for anything to go through. So, right, okay. and then you make an arc. You hold your finger there when you close it. When you step on okay. the other treadle, it brings up the other set of, of um, mm -hmm. the other harness, okay. and that's what weaves it in. See? Okay. So now it's woven in. So you just grab here in the center here and beat it down. Huh. Tuck in your tail. That looked way too easy. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> we'll see, exactly. <laughs> no, it's, it's not, you know, it's time consuming, it's, mm -hmm. it's fun, it's, it's never easy, but it's pretty simple. Right. So you can, you can stand here. Okay, and the, and the shed is closed, so I'm going to keep, stay on You want to be on a closed shed because you're going to be doing another shot. Throw it through, catch it on the other side. All right, so okay. I pulled it through, and I have it on this side, I'm going to make you an wanna arc. You want to hold it there, now make your arc. Okay. And Pretty good for a mark. Bring mm -hmm. it down just a little, because if you make it too high, you'll get buckling. Okay. So that's good right there. Now okay. hold it, step, on the other side. Perfect. Now okay. grab in the right in the center and beat hard. Good job. Ah. Throw it through the other side and okay. repeat that hole. Okay. So I pulled it through. And I want to hold it. Yes. Not too much tension, like kind of right there. And a nice fur mark, so bring that's it down. So much. Now make your arc. Okay. A little, little lower. Bring it down a little bit. Uh -huh. Step. Hold. Step. Good. Grab. No center. Beat. Yay! Michael's a weaver. All right. Thank you. You made that look so easy, and you made uh, I processed it in a way that I could do it. Because yeah, well. the loom is very intimidating if you don't know what you're doing, but once you get it, you step into it. It is. Sophia's instruction makes this look easy, but don't let my beginner's enthusiasm fool you. The artistry and technique behind the complex patterns of these rugs is not lost on me. But I do think I've found a new passion. While time consuming, there's a meditative quality to looming. The rhythm of passing the shuttle, stepping on the treadle, beating it down by closing the shed, and then seeing your progress immediately. Very gratifying. All right, I'll be here all day. All right. <laughs> Going through. Tierra Wools offers two-day, three-day, and week-long classes in dyeing, hand spinning, and weaving. If you're more limited on time, look into their free one to two hour weekly classes on ink loom weaving, hand spinning with a drop spindle, and knitting. Open year round, but during the winter, they are closed on Sundays. For more great stories like this from New Mexico Magazine, visit newmexico.org. Don't go away. We've got a lavender oasis in Georgia O'Keeffe country coming up. Need a reason to hit the road? Find upcoming events around the state at newmexico.org. And now from our Cabinet Secretary of Tourism, Monique Jacobson. Here is another New Mexico true treasure. There are lots of ways to see New Mexico, but one of my favorite is on foot. Our varied landscape and almost always terrific weather make hiking a favorite family activity for me. From simple one-hour strolls to adventurous mountain trails, there is something for everyone. And the hikes bring out the best in us. We become explorers, adventurers, and even yogis. From changing leaves to mountain streams, there's no better way to connect with the land and your family than by setting out on an excursion. To learn more about our hiking trails, visit us at newmexico.org. 
And remember to share the photos you take out on your adventures and hashtag them New Mexico True. Under an hour north of Santa Fe on Highway 84 is the Purple Adobe Lavender Farm. This exquisite property sits just outside of Abiquiu in a gorgeous valley along the Rio Chama. The land surrounding Abiquiu has drawn people from all over the world for decades. Its dramatic red-faced cliffs and the green valleys along the Chama riverbeds are stunning. And I can certainly think of no better place to make a day's adventure than in the aromatic lavender fields of this region's beloved purple adobe lavender farm. Outfitted with a gift shop and tea house, not to mention gardens under enveloping cottonwoods with trails leading you down to the river, the purple adobe lavender farm demands that you relax and wander and savor and enjoy. This place knows how to cater to a traveler like myself. Strolling through this oasis of lavender, feeling completely relaxed and immersed in my surroundings, it almost slips my mind that this place is in fact a working farm. But indeed it is. As I meander down the rows of lavender, people are cutting the stems by hand, clipping, trimming, and fashioning them into tight little bundles. And these bundles will go into the distilled oils, body products, culinary herbs, and other goods found in the gift shop. Not to mention the delectable treats at the tea house, gelatos, truffles, and scones, all made by local partnering companies that use the lavender from this farm. This is quite the operation, and it definitely has me interested in meeting the proprietor, Elizabeth, to see how this all evolved into what it is today. Good to see you too, welcome. I might, you might have to give me a job because I, I think I want to hang out here all day. <laughs> we even like you here. <laughs> yeah. It's so open and you just feel like you're at home when you come to the farm, so I, I yeah. want to know more about the background. I started reading everything I could read. <laughs> I talked to anybody that would talk to me about research, lavender. Research, research, research. Yeah, with all the research that I did, I thought that I could take it on, you know, because I had a dream of having a business uh, where I lived. Right. And so I went to France. I wanted to grow lavender like they do in France because I wanted aromatherapeutic lavender. Mm -hmm. So I learned there, came back, it took us two and a half years to find a property. I looked based on elevation because mm -hmm. the higher the elevation the sweeter the lavender soil composition latitude and longitude oh so this has, there's a science to there's finding a science the pristine spot and abiquiu uh, was the perfect oh wow abiquiu is perfect the farm was never for us right. it was always so people could come out to the to the country mm -hmm. get away get into nature, into beauty, learn about lavender, and have a peaceful day. It right. was always about that. And it, it, you'd get that ambiance as soon as you walk, walk on the property. It's, yeah. You're seeing the beautiful moths and the butterflies. There's so many herbs around. It, it is kind of calming. Take one of these off here because okay. I want you to smell that. When you squeeze the lavender, that's how you release the essential oil. Okay. Now, smell that. Oh. It's intoxicating. I know. It's beautiful. It's I a natural that. calmative. Mm -hmm. It's an antibacterial and antimicrobial. So we use it in many products, many applications. This particular field over here, now uh, we're doing culinary. You oh, can okay. actually cook with lavender. Really? Yes. Okay. And what I want you to try is let me get a stem for you here and smell the difference in the first one to the second one. Hmm. Very different, isn't Very it? Very different. So we use this in our culinary products. Um, you know, our finishing salts, our our gelato, our oh, lavender gelato. truffles. Mm. I mean, it's everything. All this talk yeah. about food is making so me hungry. Elizabeth and I decide it's time for me to have a taste test back at the tea house. So Michael, what I have for you is lavender stracciatella. Oh, you're going to love this. You're too much. You, you're spoiling me with all this <laughs> lavender everything. Oh, I know. Goodness. It's lovely. You're going to love this. Okay. And I've got more. Let me get more. <laughs> I'm so excited. Huh. I'm going to have you so full by the time you leave here. This is amazing. <laughs> lavender and ice cream. Yes. After that first bite of gelato, I could have called it a day. But Elizabeth wasn't going to let me get away with that. You've got to try one of these. You just have to. It's like, I know. If you insist. I do. If you insist. Okay, I'm going to do this one. Is this the, the Meyer that's one? The, no, that's the, the raspberry and lavender. <laughs> oh. You like? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to speak. Okay. I <laughs> well, I, I'm afraid to give you any more. I could never get you out of the chair. <laughs> that Is was that an explosion of flavor, the lavender. In a sweet, I've never had like sweet and lavender at the same time. In this tea room, it's hard to know when to say when. Yeah. 
The lavender at Purple Adobe has seduced me in every possible way. Taste, sight, sound, and smell. A complete sensory experience. I'm glad Elizabeth and her husband created this little slice of heaven in Abiquiu, and that they have decided to share with all of us. Stop by their on-site nursery where you can buy one of their lavender varietals. Elizabeth will give you special instruction on which plant will work best in your garden. And if you'd like to take a stab at creating your own lavender products, check their website for distillation demonstrations. There's no shortage of ways to enjoy this farm, but I have to say, let yourself indulge and try one of these lavender raspberry truffles. It will blow your mind. As always, thank you so much for watching another episode of New Mexico True Television. I'm your host, Michael Newman. Hopefully you get out and see all the agricultural bounty that our state has to offer. And with that being said, what are you doing next weekend?